Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. I've had a little bit of a break and uh, rested my voice a little bit, and so I think I've got one more video in me today, uh, at least for this afternoon. It's a, a rare day off. It's quite nice. But I think we're going to return to Sharoomph. Uh, I, 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 yeah, let the forces of nature tear it all down. Um, I don't know. I, I like these sort of basher melee characters because they don't require a ton of concentration. I mean, there aren't too many different options for you to take, generally speaking. Uh, so, you know, it's it's kind of kind of fun to just run through the game a little bit. I get to do a bit more commentary rather than sitting here going, hmm, hum, hmm, what should I do? A whole bunch. Uh, and also, I, I've had a couple of a couple of ascensions, a couple of victories with this style of character, so I don't particularly feel too strongly if they if they die at some point. If you know, I, I don't get too emotionally invested in them because I know I can do it. I've I've been there. I've done that. Um, it's still fun. Every victory is still a thrill. Uh, I think I've had five now, somewhere between four and six, uh, and there's one that I sometimes count as a victory. I could have grabbed the orb and run up, but instead I decided to try out a ziggurat, and I got a little big for my britches. But um, regardless, uh, uh, oh, what was my point? Uh, just that if I die, it's not as heartbreaking as one of my sort of experimental characters. I want to, I, I really want to win as a stabber type. So, you know, that's the uh, verbal herbal that we have going on there. And I really want to win as sort of an artificer uh, evoker type, uh, which is our Yugdung, our um, our Nemlek Zoba artificer evoker. So, the, the, but those are, are much trickier to play. You have to evaluate your um, your advances a lot more cautiously. Uh, your positioning is much more important. Uh, I mean, not to say that positioning isn't important on a melee character. But you can recover more easily from uh, poor positioning if you have the option of just killing everything that you run into, which we do. Uh, we never have to worry really about running out of mana because our weapon has effectively infinite, uh, infinite damage output. It's not limited by a particular resource. As long as we have hit points, we can continue to swing our axe whereas mana can run out at the most inconvenient of times. You also have to gauge, you know, what is the most efficient use of my mana given this particular situation. A fine cutlass. I will probably check that out just because I do enjoy looking at artifacts. Ah, yeah, we have a cold brand on our axe. That makes... Uh, I'm slowing things down pretty easy. Uh, one thing we do have to worry about with axes is um, running into a hydra. Huh, interesting. Hmm. I think this potion of cancellation will get rid of our contamination, so we can go ahead and safely remove this cutlass. It's a very cool weapon, but... It's uh, not really the best for us. I, I didn't have to wield it. I knew that we weren't going to use it. But I just thought, you know, uh, it'd be fun. And so, yeah. That's why we have to burn a potion now. Okay. So you'll see that we now have a, a yellow Contam debuff over by our stats. Uh, that's mutagenic energy. It's the same as if you drink uh, too many potions of invisibility in a row or, or uh, use a wand on yourself too many times in a row. Um, if you get too many spell failures in a row, uh, certain other effects, I think, can also contaminate you. Uh, were we to let it just wear off, we would probably gain a mutation over its course. Sometimes you gain two, sometimes you gain none. Uh, for, from yellow level contamination. But we have this potion of cancellation, yeah, which reduces that to a 
gray contamination level, which is harmless. You cannot be mutated by gray. It's just a, you know, you're closer to the danger zone. That's kind of a cool cutlass, uh, but we're never going to use it because it's a short blade and we don't care about short blades. Um, because we want to bash things with an axe. Anyway, I think at some point I started to say uh, that hydras are going to be a problem because axes do chop off the heads of hydras. We are not quite powerful enough to take on um, a hydra just by chopping it to death. It's almost impossible. Um, well, yeah, no. We will never, ever, ever be able to cast any spells. I don't even know why I looked at that book. I guess I, I looked at that book because it's a book of clouds. I think that um, Kozlal, uh, Kozlal spellcasters could be kind of cool if you use that. I, I feel like spellcasters benefit greatly from stealth, so maybe maybe that's too much of a drawback to be worth the immunity to your own clouds. I also don't know for certain that the clouds you cast, you summon via spells um, count. But I would assume that they do. And I would also assume that you can do some cool... Because it, it's basically like being a, a gargoyle or uh, one of the undead races for things like Mephitic Cloud, which, you know, you can just stand in and it'll confuse everything around you. Or other poison uh, effects. But I, I, I don't believe that there are any races that are immune to, naturally immune to freezing clouds or um, fire clouds. So, um, so anyway, yeah, uh, I could see that being a, a neat spellcasty build. Just throw clouds everywhere and waltz through them like a boss. Okay, what do we do? Oh, I was going to check our 22% on disaster area. Okay, we definitely want that to be usable. Uh, we want all of our escape buttons to be usable, because for one, we're not going to be needing this Amulet of Guardian Spirit all that much longer. Broad Axe is not a great weapon. It's okay, but it's not outstanding. The... the Attack delay increase over a war axe is not worth the uh, trade up to being a two-handed weapon. I believe it's a two-handed weapon. Oh no, it is a one-handed weapon. Okay, yeah, I guess it's fine. But it still has a very high base attack delay, so unless you've put a lot of points into axes early on... I mean, we got lucky with this battle axe. This battle axe is crazy. But... Oh yeah, that's right... Orange rats can drain you. Green rats poison, orange rats drain. This is uh, a slightly different set of enemies than I have seen in the lair for a little while. I don't know if that's intentionally as part of uh, 0.15 or if it's just, you know, that's the way the randomizer worked. But I haven't seen orange rats in the lair proper for quite some time, quite a number of runs. Good, got rid of our draining. Bubbling pink potions. Ants! Ah! <laughs> yeah, the, the zoning potential of these clouds is just cool. Um, what's in a 